Hello friends, welcome to Biosumit. So today we will learn about the mass spectrometer variations. This is the part 2 of the video of mass spectrometry. So if you are not uh, aware of mass spectrometry, you can check my first video, the part 1 video that will be in the description. The link will be in the description. So with quick recap, we can say this mass spectrometry actually determines the molecular mass how measuring by mass to charge ratio that means m is to z ratio and with uh, i mean in the gas phase and lastly we have checked the simple model of the mass spectrometer one like there will be one ionization source then there will be one mass analyzer and there will be detector so on the basis of ionization source or ionization technique there are so many steps or methods we can see like here i have written this that a sample molecule studied by mass spectrometer must be converted to gas phase charge particles as i have said in the part one video you can see that by the ionization process before they can be analyzed and detected before analyzer and detector will work on of their works first the molecule has to be ionized so here you can see there are so many methods one is gas phase methods second is desorption methods and third is spray methods and then this can be achieved by different different processes or methods like one is electron impacts or electron ionization ei another is chemical ionization we will look in details later first have the full form of this seems means secondary ion mass spectrometry and liquid seems liquid secondary ion mass spectrometry FAP is first atom bombardment LDI is lesser desorption ionization and maldi is matrix assisted laser desorption ionization apci that is a spray method atmospheric pressure chemical ionization and ESI is electro spray ionization so we will know the details of EI CI MALDI and ESI so the first is electron ionization or EI or sometimes it's called electron bombardment so what happens in EI a beam of high energy electrons strike the molecules so what will happen the electron the electron molecule that collision strips an electron from the molecule so what will form like M and then it's heated by one electron and one electron will be out and creating a cation in this method only 0.1% of analytes analyzes ionized so this is a very common technique of ionizing I mean ionization 
so it's normally used for relatively small neutral organic molecule like for small neutral organic molecules near about molecular weight is less than 600 for example the volatile compounds now the second method is chemical ionization so what happens the sample molecules are combined with an ionized reagent gas so when the sample molecules collide with the ionized reagent gas some of the sample molecules are ionized there can be various mechanisms like proton transfer or electron transfer or adduct formation like let's say m is the sample and it's treated by nh4 plus then it can create m plus h plus or m plus nh4 plus so these are cations actually ci is a lower energy alternative to ei now maldi or matrix assisted laser desorption ionization but before that we have to know what is desorption ionization so in desorption ionization the sample to be analyzed is dissolved in a matrix and placed in the path of high energy beam of ions or high intensity photons so what happens in maldi the analyzed is placed in the light absorbing solid matrix so if i am drawing some symmetric diagram or easy diagram let's say this is the matrix and let's say this is the analytes okay so this is the matrix and the blue beads are the analyze now the laser is on the analytes so what happens these particles okay, there will be happen desorption so what happened let's see here that's the red mark and the analytes are like this now what will happen now this is called after desorption and now desolvation and ionization will occur so what will happen so this will be positive and this is the here i have drawn very simple diagram of the very very simple symmetric representation of maldi but now we will go in details about the maldi so maldi has three basic steps first one is formation of solid solution then matrix excitation and analyte ionization but before that you have to remember for high intensity photons it is maldi it is maldi means the desorption ionization process is called then maldi so first what will happen formation of the solid solution it is essential for the matrix to be in excess okay 
for the matrix i mean matrix should be excess thus leading to the analyte molecules being completely isolated from each other okay then matrix excitation so what will happen the laser beam here is focused onto the surface of the matrix analyte solid solution so let's have the diagram again so in this diagram you can in this diagram you can see that the matrix chromophore that is is absorbing the laser irradiation causing rapid vibrational excitation and bringing about localized disintegration of the solid solution that means you can see here the blues are matrix ion and the reds are here analyte ions so these clusters ejected from the surface consist of analyte this is the red molecules and surrounded by the matrix that's the blue and salt ions so the matrix molecules evaporate away from the clusters to leave the free analyte in gas phase so this is the vacuum place now here you can see there is this is called excitation x sorry extraction grid okay and then there will be some focusing lens and then it will pass for mass spectrometer so you can understand how the ionization happens here so first matrix excitation is happened then analyte ionization is happened so matrix is excited and it's making the ions there is the matrix ions this is uh, the, and, and there is analyte ions the analyte ions are surrounded by the matrix ions like this and then it goes for the mass spectrometer for further analysis so this is the general idea of maldi now we'll look about about our next and the last part that is electrospray technique so what happens in esi for esi first the sample is dissolved in a polar volatile solvent and pumped through a narrow stainless steel capillary and the voltage is needed is about 3 to 4 kilovolt this is applied to the tip of the capillary we will see a diagram how it is happening so let's check the diagram so here you can see this is the es capillary now the strong electric field outside that extract this droplet from the Taylor cone this is this part is called the Taylor cone and you can see here this is extracted by the strong electric field then what happening the solvent evaporation is happening so see the size of this this is much smaller than this so evaporation is happening right solvent evaporates and droplets shrink you can see here droplets are shrinking at charge so that's why what is happening so here droplets shrink that means charge density increases and then what happens this is called coulombic explosion and through this multiple charge droplets there there you can see the multiple charge droplets and then we can have the analyte ions okay so this is called ESI so the advantage is you can easily use the uh, I mean big mass uh, what to say I mean for the large masses you can easily able to handle the uh, to handle some large masses through ESI and the disadvantage is you can't analyze mixtures very well from this right so the advantage is you can easily handle the large mass and the disadvantage is you can't analyze the mixture very well okay so this is the part two of this video in the next video we will see how to calculate the mass thank you